Okay, here's another two bar example. It's got a straight feel. It sounds a lot like this. Two, one, two, three, four. This is a two bar example based around this chord. It's G minor seven. Now the first move here is to put your little finger up here on the C on the eighth fret. Now that's, that's putting the 11 on top. The next move is uh, this interval of a fourth. This is a C and an F. And then we move it up a whole step. It's a slide and we lead with an upstroke. Then we play the same thing again, then two downstrokes with the same interval. Slowly, everything together sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One more time. Okay, let's take it up tempo now. One, two, three, four. Here's another example. This one's up tempo, kind of an earth, wind, and fire thing. It's a straight feel, and keep just scratch the guitar all the way through. Sounds like this. Two, three, four. This part is based around this G minor 7 chord right here. Now the rhythm part starts with an upstroke. Up, down, down, up. Now that pattern will repeat throughout the, the uh, entire part. After we play that, then we get take up here with our fourth finger on the sixth fret and we bar the first two strings. That's an interval of a fourth. That's an F and a B flat. Then we play the part again. And then we come down to this a C and an F, again a fourth interval on the fifth and sixth fret on the second and third strings. The whole thing together, played slowly, sounds like this. Two, three, four. Up, down, down, up. Up, down, down, up. One more time. Okay, let's take it up tempo now. One, two, three, four. Okay, the last one in this uh, section of minor chords is in C minor. Uh, it's a straight feel, and it sounds like this. Two, one, two, three, four. Let's look at this. 
This part is also based on this chord voicing. Now the only move here is to go from uh, with your first finger on the 8th fret to your third finger on the 10th fret and then back down and give it a little shake. So the part slowly in its entirety sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Let's play this one with the band now. One, two, three, four. Right, we've been talking a lot about chords and chord fragments and dominant and minor. And let's just go on to another aspect of uh, funk playing, and that's single note parts. Now, basically, there's three ways you can categorize single note parts. First is muted. The second is open. And the third is the most aggressive. It's skank. Right, now, some of the similar rules apply to single note playing that do to playing chords. First, you want to keep your right hand moving in a constant 16th up and down fashion. That, that helps you keep your time together, just like when you're playing chord parts. The other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, you'll notice that all of the examples in this section are very simple, short parts. So not to draw attention to themselves, they just blend in with the rhythm section. Keep that in mind when you're coming up with your own single note parts. Now, the first one is in the key of C. It's a straight feel, and here we go. Two, three. Okay, let's break it down a little bit slower. Now this muted part like this, notice we're muting with the palm of our hand on the bridge. We're muting just to, to uh, deaden the sustain of the note, but not to cut off the pitch. These muted parts are referred to as bubble picking parts because they have a kind of like a percolating sort of sound to the track. Okay, let's try it slowly. Keep your pick moving with your right hand. One, two, three, four. Notice I'm shaking that long note. Okay, now let's play it up tempo with the rhythm section. One, two, three, four. Now let's do the exact same part with a swing feel. One, two, three, four.
Okay, this next example is in A minor. It's a straight feel now. Uh, it's another example of the bubble picking, but we're going to open it up halfway through. You can play along if you like. This is muted. Now open. Keep your pick moving. Now you notice I have a, an effect on the guitar, a flanger. The uh, modulation effects such as phase shifting, flanging, and chorus sound really good on these uh, single note parts, so we're going to try a couple of those out. All right, let's play it back up to tempo now. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's play it now with the swing feel. One, two, three, a swing. It. Open it up. This last example is also a muted part, a bubble picking part, but it's different from the others. With the other examples, we played one small part, and it stayed the same while the chords changed around it. In this case, our part's going to change. The rhythm will stay the same, but the notes will change and follow the chords. Check it out. Two, three, four. Okay, we're playing over two chords here, A minor 7 and G major 7. Now you can hear I've got a phase shifter going here. It's another modulation effect. It sounds good on a muted part like this. The notes I'm using over the A minor are an E, G, A, and C. And when it goes down to G major 7, the notes are D, F sharp, G, and B. Let's play it a little slower together. Two, three, four. All right, let's do number 34 up to tempo now. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's move on to the last of the single note techniques. This is called skank playing. I don't know why it's called skank playing, but it uh, sounds good to me. Uh, it's the most difficult of the three, but it's also uh, my personal favorite. It's got a lot of attitude. It's like playing a single note part uh, with the power of playing a chord part. Okay, there's some exercises that you can play. The actual skank sound is a result of being very accurate with your right hand, that is hitting the note you want to sound, 
and then um, hitting the next string below it, or the next two strings below it. Now they're muted, and the muting takes place with your uh, left hand, that is uh, your index finger generally. Now that's for the downstroke. On the upstroke, you're hitting the muted strings first, and then the note you want to sound. So it's the, the opposite. Now the exercise. I tell my students to um, just use a minor pentatonic scale, the one that most people know. It could be anything, you just want to get across the neck. I'm in uh, A minor here. And start with a downstroke. And what you're trying to accomplish is accuracy with your right hand and some sort of muting technique with your left hand. Those are just downstrokes. Let's try upstrokes. Now you're going to see this is a very difficult technique, so it's going to take some practice. Once you get that together, then do both up and down strokes combined like this. isn't so important at this point. It's just getting the accuracy with your right hand and developing the muting technique with your left hand. Okay, now it's generally easiest to start this technique in the middle of the uh, guitar, that is playing the third or the fourth string. So we're going to start the first exercise here on the third string playing a D and an E. And it'll sound like this. Start scratching. One, two, three, four. Now let's add a little note to this. This is at the end of the bar on the last 16th, we're going to take this G, give it a little push, little attitude. We push it and then let it drop, and it'll sound like this. And now let's add an envelope filter just to give it a little bit uh, more traditional sound. An envelope filter is like a wah pedal that uh, reacts to a tap. All right, now let's play this whole part with a swing feel with the rhythm section. One, two, three, four. Okay, here's a challenging part for you to sink your teeth into. This utilizes an open E string on the bottom. And it's got a swing feel too. Okay, we're gonna slow it down, but before we play it slow, check a couple things out here. What's happening is I'm playing the open E on a downstroke, and then on upstroke I play the um, the, e, the octave here on the seventh fret, and the, the pad of my finger is deadening the open E, so I get this. And it cuts off that open E from ringing. The next move after that is, and notice I'm shaking that E pretty good. Okay, so it's, okay, that's a D and an E, and then we go with a G for the last note. And I'm using my index finger for the G as well as this D here, so you gotta kinda jump a little bit. Play it slow together. Swing, two, three, four. All 
All right, let's play this up tempo with the band. One, two, three, yo. Here's one with a straight feel. We're in A minor, and it has a whole step slide in it. And here it is. Two, three. Okay, if we slow it down and take a look, we're in A minor, like I said, and we have just these notes. A, C, G, A. And the whole step slide that I talked about was from D to E. And then when we come back down to C, give it a little bend for attitude. Okay? Slowly. Two, three, four. Keep your hand moving. play this back up to speed now. And this part kind of lends itself to having a wah-wah pedal. And you'll also notice, uh, hopefully, that I'm using the wah to accentuate the part, not just moving my foot in time with the music. Three, four. This one's going to get pretty fast. It's a straight feel. It's a two-bar pattern. It's in the key of E. Let's go. One, two, three, four. This part's pretty straight ahead. There's just a D and an E. And at the end of the second bar, there's a little um, downstroke on the C-sharp and then a quick upstroke on the G with a push. We've done that move a couple times by now. You should be pretty much used to that. Uh, let's try it a little slower all together. Two, three, four. It's going to get fast. Are you ready? Let's do it. One, two, three, four. In this section, we're going to combine single line playing and chord playing to create some interesting and more challenging guitar parts. This first one's in the key of D, 
It's got a swing feel. It's a two-bar pattern. It sounds pretty cool. Let's check it out. One, two, three, four. Okay, like I said, it's a D9, but we add the 13 on top, that's the B, and then we play A, C, D, and then again with the D13, and then um, all down strokes, A, C, D, and then F with a little push and a drop. We're used to that move now. Let's play it slower all together. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's take it back up to speed. One, two, three, four. Okay, here's the one up in the key of G. It's a little faster. It's a two-bar pattern. It's got a straight feel. Kind of has a James Brown attitude. Check it out. One, two, three, four. This example uses a number of devices. It starts off with the uh, same uh, 9 chord and the 13 that we've used on a bunch of examples. And then it uses that tritone, sliding in the tritone. That's the third and the, the third and the flat seventh. And uh, it does it again. And then at the end, it uses a single line, D and then F and G, but that's hammered on. Okay, kind of a skank attitude here. Let's play it slow. Two, three, four. All right, let's play it back up to speed. Make a groove. One, two, three. Okay, here's one back down in E. It's got a straight feel. It's going to get pretty fast, and it'll probably kick your butt. Here we go. Two, one, two, three, four. We have a lot to look at with this one. First of all, this slide happens a number of times. Uh, with our second finger, I'm sliding from D to E, kind of a skank sound. So in the beginning, it's a slide, upstroke, slide, and then four, slide, upstroke again, like the beginning. And then this skank part here, where I'm uh, starting with an A and sliding up a half step. So that's sliding up to B flat, back down to A, G, E, and then we begin all over again. Let's play it slowly all together. One, two, three, four.
Okay, let's take it back up to speed. We're going to play with the band. Hang in there. One, two, three, four. In this section, we're going to talk about playing double stop parts. Now, the term double stop just simply means playing two notes at the same time. My approach to playing double stop parts is pretty similar to how I approach to playing uh, the single note parts. Uh, just by adding the second note, it helps outline the harmony. Now, you can play it muted, open, and skank, just like the others. And uh, like the single note parts, you can play the same part while the chords move around, or you can have the, the part follow the chords. In this first example, we're going to be in B minor. We're going to play the same part, but you'll notice the chords change around the example. Let's check it out. Okay, if we take a look at this, uh, the two double stops that we're using are a D and an F sharp. They're on the seventh fret, then a C sharp and an E. Now, basically, this chord progression is in B minor, so this D and the F sharp are the third, the flatted third, and the fifth from a B minor chord, and the C sharp and E are the third and the fifth from an A. So the implication in the part is that we're just going back and forth between B minor and A. Okay, you can hear that I've got the flanger back on. I think it sounds kind of cool on this part. Let's play it together slowly. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's play it up tempo now. One, two, three, four. All right, let's move up to the key of C. This part's a little different from the last one. This is a melodic part where the chord stays the same, but the part moves around. It's got a New Orleans sort of shuffle feel to it. I think you'll like it. Let's check it out. All right, let's take a look at what's happening here. Uh, the first double stop is a C and an E, which is the root in the third in C, sliding down to barring with our first finger on the eighth fret, and then barring with our third finger on the tenth fret, back to the eighth fret, and then the second and third uh, string with our third finger on the tenth fret, that's a mouthful, and then our first finger down on the eighth fret, and then hammering on with our second finger to the major third, so that's... Now we move down in here to fifth position, and uh, we play a D and an F, C and an E, and then a single line, G, A, C, D, C. Let's do the whole thing slowly now. Remember, it's got quite a swing feel to it. Three, four. time.
right, let's do it up. One, two, three, a gumbo. <laughs> The last example in this section, it's a two bar pattern, it has a swing feel, and although it stays the same rhythmically, the part harmonically moves with the chord changes. All right, let's break this down one bar at a time. Um, G minor is the first bar, and the second bar we're playing over an F major 7. Over the G minor we're playing an F and an A, and then a G and a B flat, and then a single D note. It starts with an upstroke. That's the last 16th of the bar. It's called a 16th note push, and it's a little difficult to get used to. Um, then over the F major 7, we're playing an E and a G and an F and an A, and then a single C note, okay? Let's try it together slowly. One, two, three, swing it. One more time. Okay, now let's play it up with a band. One, two, three. You've probably heard me play this rhythmic device, this uh, 16th note triplet, a number of times throughout the video. You know, it's a real effective device to have in your funk arsenal. But once you get comfortable playing it, you've got to be careful. The tendency will be to, to play it all the time, and it can take away from the groove as much as it can help it. So let's start by playing an exercise that helps you get it under your fingers quickly. Okay, you'll notice a couple things. First, we're just here back at our uh, old friend E9. What we're doing is we're playing downbeats for a bar, and then on the end of four, we're playing this 16th note triplet. You notice my hand gets kind of caught playing an upstroke and just suspends there for a second. The reason for that is a 16th note triplet uh, forces three uh, strokes where two would normally go. So it leaves you on an upstroke at the beginning of the bar. So you need to suspend your hand for just one 16th note to get the cycle back together again. Let's play it slowly, you'll see what I mean. One, two, three, four. Okay, here's a two bar pattern that uses that 16th note triplet. It's in the key of G, it's got a straight feel, and it's kind of loosely based on that original JB part from the beginning of the video. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's slow it down a little bit. We're up here on the 10th fret, playing a G9. At the end of the bar, we do that uh, 16th note triplet. At the end of the second bar, we go down to F9, 
the F sharp 9, and then we're back to the top. Let's play it together slowly. Two, three, four. Be on your toes, this one's fast. Let's play it up tempo. One, two, three, four. What we're going to do now is we're going to take some of the rhythm examples that we've played throughout the video and we're going to put them together in song form. Now there'll be two songs here and each one will have two sections, an A section and a B section. And each of those sections will be eight bars long. Now the first example that we're going to play, you may remember this was number 28 and it sounded like this. We're going to move that up, it's in G now, and we're going to move it up to D minor. It's got a little bit of a swing feel to it. Now that'll be the A section. That's a two bar pattern. So what that means is you'll play it four times. And then you'll move on to the B section. And this was number 41. You may remember this. But we're gonna put a swing feel to it because earlier we played it with a straight feel. Now we put a swing feel to it and it gets a little funkier. Now like I said, this is the B section and that's an eight bar section. And this is a two bar pattern. We only want to play this for seven bars, however. So we're going to play this part three times. That'll be six bars. And then we're going to play the first half of it. That'll be seven bars. And then on the eighth bar of the B section, we're going to go up here to A9 and play this figure. OK, kind of a James Brown thing. So eight bars of this, section, of this part, then seven bars of this part, and we're going to end with. Let's play it one time through the form slowly. And um, I'm feeling a little frisky. Uh, I think I'm going to try a few things here. Two, three, four. section. Turn around. Here comes the ending. On one, D minor. Now all those little things that I'm doing, you see me do that stuff throughout the video. They're just based basically on um, uh, minor pentatonics or the major scales. There's nothing uh, tricky about them. It's just experience and uh, listening for uh, parts on records. OK, now let's bring it back up to tempo and play it with our funky rhythm section. One, two, three.
Okay, here we are at our last example. The form here is the same, an 8-bar A section and an 8-bar B section. The feel's a little different. It's a straight feel, and it's a little bit faster. We're going to use rhythm pattern number 38. It sounded like this. That was a 1-bar pattern, but we're going to change it a little bit and turn it into a 2-bar pattern, and it'll sound like this. So we're just taking and barring on the fifth uh, fret the top three strings. One more time. That's a two-bar pattern now. That'll be the A section. We're going to play that four times. Two-bar pattern, four times, makes for the eight-bar A section. Now the B section, we're going to play pattern 14. Now pattern 14 originally was in the key of E, and it was a swing feel. We're going to move it down to D and make it a straight feel, and it'll sound like this. Like that. Now that's a one bar pattern. We're gonna play that seven times, so we fill up seven bars. Now on the eighth, eighth, eighth bar of the B section, we're gonna play this turnaround, an E7 sharp nine chord, good old Jimi Hendrix chord, and the rhythm will be like this. Just straight eighth notes. And maybe at the end you want to put one of those 16th note triplets, so it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. And then we'll go back to the top. All right, one time through the form. One, two, three, four. go up tempo three four Okay, that's it. We've come to the end of the video. I'd like to say thanks very much for checking it out. I hope you got a lot out of it. But before we go, there's a couple of points I'd like to make. First of all, you can learn all the technique, but you can't learn the feel unless you listen to the artists who define the style. You really need to spend the time and the effort to really listen closely to these musicians. So let me suggest a few things. In the book, you'll notice a, a list of uh, CDs that I've, uh, I've put in there. First of all, uh, I've just recently come across a compilation set on the Rhino uh, label called In Your Face. It's about a six disc compilation that really has a great cross section of the artists. Now, if you want to check out specific artists, you've got to start with James Brown. Okay, from there, you might want to check out Sly Stone, Parliament, Earth, Wind and Fire, Tower of Power. Boy, there's so many, I'll leave out some, but uh, Early Cool in the Gang, Cameo, Graham Central Station, Rufus, Average white band, Prince, they're all great. But uh, there are certain records that you just have to have. So go out, do the research, check out the music, and then you'll be a true funk guitar player. All right, thanks again, and we'll see you around.